Good morning, everybody. You guys doing good? So great to have you. Let's all of us stand to our feet. We do something at the start of every service. Uh, we wrap our understanding around a collection of phrases that we call our Shoreline Creed. Uh, before we do that, though, I wanted to uh, just highlight what you already know instinctively in your heart, that it takes the commitment of a lot of volunteers to make happen what happens every Sunday morning. We call this courageous group of people our three team because they help us accomplish the mission of the church, which is to help people know God, find life, and make a difference. And they serve everywhere in children, in youth, in parking, ushers, greeters, cafe, technology, you know, praise and worship. Everywhere you see these volunteers. Let's give them a great big hand clap this morning. And if you, if you want to take that next step and get involved, we want to encourage you to do that. You can get that information in the lobby. Uh, we want to give a warm welcome to all of you who are watching online. Come on, give it up for our online church community. And those of you who are a part of our Shoreline South Campus as well, we, we welcome you uh, today. Our Shoreline Creed is a collection of phrases around the love and grace of God. And at the end of the day, that's what Christianity is all about wonderful principles and ideas on how to live a better life. But at the end of the day, what truly matters is God doing for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. And we celebrate that with our creed. If you're new to Shoreline, you can read along. The rest of us, we say this with some enthusiasm and passion. You guys ready? Come on, you guys ready? Here we go. I am loved by God. I cannot earn it. I cannot lose it. I am forgiven and made brand new. In Christ, I live with passion and purpose. I am empowered by the Spirit to be the church in the world and to live this love revolution. Come on, let's give God praise for that. All right, you may be seated. So today we are honored to celebrate all of our graduates. And when we think about graduates, we think about those who are maybe just starting their journey, maybe graduating from high school or graduating from college. And I wanted to share a message that would help launch them into whatever it is that God has for them. But then when I got to thinking about this idea of young people and, and maybe those of us who have been around for a little while, you know, isn't age just a number? Think about it for a moment. I, you know, somebody said this somewhere along the, the way, but how old would you be if you didn't know what your birthday was? How old would you be? I mean, it's like, I, I'm up here. I know how old I am because I know my birthday, but uh, you know what? I feel so much younger than my age. In fact, I did one of those tests, you know, that, that tests you, you know, what your physiological age is. And I tested 15 years younger than my actual age. Come on. That's, and I'm sure you feel the same way. You know, we're just, I don't care how old you are. We're just a bunch of young kids kicking it in, in here. I got my jacket, dude. We're, we're, we're just going to have a we're just going to have a, a service uh, around all of us as young people launching into all that God has for us. Amen. So, you know, at graduation, people are, you know, hearing commencement speeches and often the speech will have, you know, elements like this dream big and work hard and run fast. And certainly, you know, there are times when you need to run fast. It reminds me of a story of two friends that were graduating, one from the University of Texas, the other one from Texas A&M. They were friends on a hike in the wilderness and they confront a bear that's like 20 yards away and they were frozen in fright. Eventually, the University of Texas friend tells his Aggie friend, we have gotta run. And the Aggie friend says, well, we can't outrun a bear. And the UT friend says, well, we don't have to outrun the bear. All I gotta do is outrun you. Sometimes we do need to run fast, but if that's what you're basing your future on, then you're not going to live the kind of life that God has planned for you. There's a lot more to than just working hard and running fast. 
If you sum up the ideals of the people in our culture and in our world, it seems like the, the, the average person thinks about life this way. I'm going to go to school, school, school. I'm going to work, work, work. I'm going to save, save, save. And then on that last little sliver of life, I'm going to try to, you know, enjoy the journey. And I just want you to know that God has so much more for you than just work, save, and try to eke out a little bit of joy at the end. God has an awesome, amazing life for you. And I have a feeling that this life that God has for you is wrapped in to the topic that we're going to talk about for a few moments here uh, this morning. This is the message that I wish I could have shared with myself when I was graduating, you know, 42 years ago. This is the message that I wish I was sharing with this graduate, okay? 40 plus years ago, I was graduating from college and, uh, and, and I was, you know, I had the honor of, of giving the, the, you know, the student uh, speech at our graduation. And uh, normally that goes to the valedictorian, but as many of you know, I graduated in the part of the class that made the upper half possible. So it wasn't a valedictorian speech. I was actually selected by the student body to represent uh, them at graduation. And it was an honor that I did not expect at all. But all of us are graduates, right, right? We've all graduated from high school and some of us have graduated from college, but everyone here today, regardless of your age, there's something I want you to know. And it's what I wished I had a better understanding of when I first you know, was launching out in life. What I wanna talk about for a few moments together here this morning about is I wanna talk about the beauty of favor, favor. Now, let me uh, give you a definition of favor. I'm going to put it here on the screen. Favor is defined this way, that somebody, a person will look upon you with grace, acceptance, a, di a desire to benefit, to give gifts, to be generous, pleasure, pleasantness, kindness, and beauty. That's the definition of favor, that someone would look upon you with the desire to benefit you, to accept you, to be gracious to you, to be generous to you, to be pleasant to you, to be kind to you. That's the definition of favor. And the Bible speaks of favor coming into our lives from two unique, you know, persons, so to speak. And there are a number of different scripture references that highlight these two sources. In Proverbs chapter three and verse four, it just lays it out, favor with God and mankind, right? Favor with God and favor with people. Those are the, the two places where favor can come into our world. There's a number of other passages uh, that describe this idea of favor with God and man. Luke chapter two and verse 52, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. First Samuel chapter two and verse 26, Samuel grew in favor with God and man. And there are others. I just highlight these for you today to kind of set the plate on where favor comes from. But I want you to imagine with me here this morning, if from this day forward, you began to contemplate the significance of what favor could do for you. Imagine having favor with God, to have God look upon you with grace and acceptance and a desire to be generous to you, to give good gifts to you, to be pleasant and, and bestow upon you kindness and beauty. What would your life be like if God was favorable towards you? And think about this. How would you live your life if you had favor with people, grace and acceptance, uh, that people would have a desire to benefit you, to help you on the journey, to lift you and inspire you and, and give gifts to you, to be generous with you. Favor is awesome. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, someone generously gave to Laura and I a gift card at a fancy restaurant in Austin. And it took us a couple of months to actually get there. But when we got there and we sat down and we ate, uh, it was a wonderful meal. The ambiance was just beautiful. The food was incredible. It was delicious. But when we got up to pay, we, we got our gift card out and we were going to make the payment. 
But apparently somebody from our church was in that restaurant and saw us eating there and already paid for our meal. We got a twofer. That's what I'm talking about. Favor. Favor ain't fair. It's not what you deserve. It's just God blessing beyond what you deserve. Looking back in my life, I see God's favor everywhere. How else do you explain that I had the opportunity to marry this beauty? Take a look. This is Laura and I on our wedding day. I love that. Oh, yeah. And this coming Friday, we're going to be celebrating 38 years of marriage. So we're excited. Thank you. Thank you. Every year, she says, I'll give you one more year. So I, I got to stay on my toes, you know. And when I think about everything that we're experiencing here today, when I think about this church building, when I think about all of you people, when I think about the opportunity that we have to reach out to beyond the shores of our own country, even to around the world through the technology that's available, I just see God's favor everywhere. And I'm so, so grateful. You may not realize it, but favor is actually one of the key ingredients to some of the most famous stories in the Bible. And I want to highlight a few of them for you here this morning so you can get an idea of how practically favor works in your life. Like, for instance, in the story of Esther, we'll learn that favor opens up doors that could never be opened. The children of Israel are held captive by the king of Persia. And there is somebody in the kingdom of Persia that wants to wipe out all the children of Israel. And the way that God delivers his people is through giving Esther favor and opening up do do doors for her that would have never opened. In Esther chapter two and verse 15, you just get a little bit of a hint of it. Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. God just bestowed upon her favor and people were drawn to her. People just liked her. People were, you know, attracted to her. In Ephesians chapter two and verse uh, 17, the king loved Esther more than all the other women. And she obtained grace and what? Favor in the sight uh, more than all the other virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen. And then from that position of being queen, we get the beautiful conclusion of this story. Esther chapter seven and verse three, then queen Esther answered and said, if I have found favor in your sight, O king, and it pleases the king, let my life be given to me at my petition and my people at my request. In other words, she goes into the chamber of the king at the risk of her own life, because that was the rule of the day. And she asks permission for herself and her people to be spared. And the favor that God put upon her life delivered all of her countrymen from the evil intent of the enemy. Favor will open up doors for you that you could never open. Maybe, you know, as a graduate, you're hoping to get into the next you know, uh, you know, place of education, you need favor to open up those doors. Maybe you, there's a job that you're, you're wanting to get. You need favor to open up those doors. Favor opens up doors that you could never open for yourself. This is what I wished I would have known graduating from college and launching into the world. I would have wished I could know a little bit more about favor. Favor not only will open up doors for you, but Favor will turn around negative circumstances for your good. In Genesis chapter 39 and verse four, it says that Joseph found favor. And when you read the story of Joseph, you see favor, you know, intertwined all throughout the story. His brothers out of jealousy, you know, wanted to kill him, but threw him into a pit instead and then decided, you know, to sell him into slavery. But everywhere Joseph went, even though his brothers meant it for evil, God turned it around for good. And God used favor to do it. He, he gave favor to Joseph in the eyes of his master, Potiphar. Gave favor 
to Joseph in the eyes of the jailer that was watching him. And then in a moment of complete divine destiny, it was favor that elevated Joseph from the prison to the palace. And it only took one day to do it. All of that was because of favor upon his life. All of us face challenges and circumstances, and sometimes there are negative things that come into our world, but with God's favor, he can turn it around for good. Another story that has favor all wrapped in it, one of the most popular stories in the Bible. Uh, the Bible speaks about this particular king more than any other king besides Jesus, but it's the story of a little shepherd boy who becomes the king of all of Israel, the greatest king. And along the way, fights Goliath and kills Goliath and, and outwits, you know, the, the negative strategies of King Saul and, and, uh, and even endures rebellion within his own family uh, and uh, in his own kingdom. And at the end of the day, when people look back on David's life, in fact, this is a quote from the New Testament referring back to the story of David. And it says in Acts chapter seven and verse 46, David found favor with God. All of those things that happened in David's life, all of the victories over all of his, his adversaries was prompted and motivated by favor. And I can go on to tell you about how God rescued Noah from the storm and how he'll rescue us from the storms of life. Genesis chapter six and verse eight, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, how favor makes impossible situations possible. You think about Moses in Exodus chapter 11, it says this, the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was exceedingly great in the land of Egypt and in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and of all of the people. The whole story of the children of Israel coming out of the bondage of Egypt and into the promised land is all wrapped up in this beautiful word called favor. So when you think about this idea of favor, the favor that we have with God and the favor that we have with people, how do we get it? How do we access it? How does it become a part of our daily living? Let's talk first about the favor that we have with God. Here's the secret. You already have it. You already have it. Grace, which we celebrate in our creed every time we get together, is defined as God's unmerited favor, undeserved favor. All of you young people sitting over here, God has favor for you that you don't earn or deserve. All of us are recipients of God's favor. You know, we think about the Christmas story. We hear these verses all the time, but you get a little glimpse of what God had in mind. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with an angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his what favor rests. When Jesus was beginning his, his ministry, he opened up the Bible and was quoting this prophecy and, uh, and, and this prophecy uh, tells us some beautiful things. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In other words, when Jesus showed up, he says, I'm here to proclaim to you the favor of God that's upon your life and you don't earn it and you don't deserve it. It's coming to you as a gift. But here's the key. It's, it's something you already have, but you've got to receive by faith what God has already given. You've got to activate it. You, you've got to trust in it. You've got to surrender to it. It's not just uh, good enough to know it, mental ascent. You've got to have it in your heart. 
as something you believe deeply. It's not a passive kind of receiving. It's an aggressive, passionate thing. Graduates and all of us here, young in heart, now is the time and this is the year. God doesn't want you to look at the banquet that he has laid out for you and just see it from a distance. He doesn't want you to walk in the room and just you know, kind of a smell, you know, the aroma of the banquet. He wants you to pull up a chair and start feasting on the banquet that he has provided for you. The banquet of his favor. It reminds me of a story about this gentleman who was wanting to travel from Europe to the United States and he bought a ticket on a, on a ship, but he only had enough money for the ticket to, to purchase the transportation. He didn't have much left over and he had just enough to buy some cheese and crackers. And that's what he had for breakfast and for lunch and for dinner on the three week journey. All he had was cheese and crackers. Every day he would see the rest of the ship's company going into the great banquet halls and feasting on what seemed like mountains of food. And there was steak and there was chicken and turkey and, and there was vegetables and potatoes and desserts and cakes and and he would see and he would long, you know, just for one meal at the table, but he would find a little corner on the ship and break out his cheese and his crackers. And that's what he had every single day. When the ship was one day away from getting into the harbor in New York, he turned to the steward and he said, you know, I've been on this ship now for three weeks. And I've been eating cheese and crackers the entire time. And I see all of these wonderful people going into the banquet. Can I just have one meal at the banquet table? And the steward looked at the man and said, sir, didn't you realize that when you bought your ticket, you had full access to the banquet? You could have eaten there every single day. My friends, I don't want you to get to heaven with your little cheese and crackers mentality about what God wants to do in your heart and in your life, only to discover there the bounty of the banquet that he has laid out for you. I want you to receive it today. God has more than cheese and crackers for you. There is a banquet that he not only wants you to see and smell, but there's a banquet he wants you to partake of. Receive by faith today the favor that God has already given you. Could I hear a good amen? amen? All right. So there's this favor that we have with God that he's already given to us because he is so fond of you. He loves you. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be magnetized to it. If God had a computer, you would be the screensaver. I have an iPhone and an iPad, and this is not a commercial for Apple, but, and I, I've got a computer and I have three grandkids. My grandson is on my iPhone. My granddaughter is on the iPad and my other granddaughter is on the computer. First thing that I see every time I look at my devices is a picture of my grandkids who I love more than I love my own life. And I'm here to tell you that God loves you an infinite amount greater than what I could ever express to my own children. He loves you. If God had a screen savior, your picture would be on it. Favor, favor, God delights. Well, if you're going to patty cake, that's not good enough. Come on, let's give God a hand clap here today. God has a desire to look at you with grace and acceptance and benefit and generosity. But let's talk for a couple of minutes as we close about the favor that we receive from people. Because the favor that we receive from God, and it's a little bit intertwined, sometimes the favor that we have with God actually is manifested in the favor that he gives to other people on your behalf. But there is a pathway for us to walk in our lives that creates favor with people. God's favor is freely given. We receive it by faith. But the favor that we have with other people 
actually is activated when you walk in a certain path. And I've highlighted just a, a few of the things that we can be conscious of in our lives if we want to cultivate favor uh, with the people in our world, maybe even your spouse or your, or your kids or, or, or your friends or your neighbors or the people that you work with or your brothers and sisters in Christ. They, these principles cultivate favor in the relationships that we have with the people around us. How do we find favor with other people? It comes on the path of Humility. Have you ever noticed that when people express humility, it just causes you to lean in? The other day I was watching an interview with an athlete that had been blessed with almost like supernatural athletic ability. I mean, he's at the top of his game and there isn't anyone even close to doing what he could do. And so I was intrigued, you know, just by the stature, the reputation, the excellence that this person, you know, lives out their, their, their giftedness in terms of the whole world. It, I was just listening to the conversation and I had this impression that he wasn't so impressed with himself, that he didn't even value his own gifts more than what he really valued was to be a good person, to be a, a man of integrity and honesty and character, someone that could be relied upon. You, you just got this idea that family was more important, friends were more important. You just didn't have this perspective that he was all into himself and how great he was. And I found myself as I was listening to this interview, just leaning in a little bit more and liking him more because he was just walking on the path of sincere humility. And humility, people, you know, kind of get all been out of shape on this particular word. It's not, it's not that you're thinking um, of yourself as being less. You're just thinking of yourself less. You're not thinking of yourself all that much. You're thinking about others. It's not that you don't value yourself or you don't think that you're important. You just understand that life is more than just you. And you say, well, how can I build humility in, in my heart? Well, you know, you did it by coming to church here this morning. And you might not even realize it, but when you walked into the doors of this church, you took a giant step forward in terms of humility and, and expressing it into your life. Because what did you do? You raised your hands and surrender to God. You started worshiping God. And when you do that, what you're saying is that there is more to life than just me. I can't make it on my own. I surrender my life to God. And while you're surrendering your life to God, your hands are forming a funnel to receive his blessings into your heart and into your life. And my friend, that's what humility is. Recognizing the greatness of God. And when you walk that out in your life, people are drawn to you. The path of humility, the path of faithfulness, being a trustworthy person, being dependable, it creates favor. When you're the person who shows up on time for work, and then works hard while you're there and then leaves at the appropriate time, you may not be thinking it's a big deal, but when you do that faithfully, it's creating favor in your life. Favor in faithfulness to your spouse, favor in faithfulness to your kids, favor in faithfulness to God. This whole idea of, of coming here to church, I don't know if you realize, but, you know, we mentioned, you know, the contribution of our three team. But before every uh, service on Sunday morning at 845, the first service starts at 930 at 845. There are hundreds of people that are gathered together in the lobby and we have a little huddle and prayer time and devotional. And uh, and we just talk about serving the people of this community. And you know what? When we're looking at people to help us expand the kingdom, it's not all about giftedness. Yes, we love people who are gifted, but there's something more important than giftedness. And that's faithfulness. And faithfulness just creates favor. Jesus was talking about that when he was talking about the parable of the talents. He, he was, you know, just talking about this idea of being faithful with, with what you have. And he talked about how he gave to one person five talents, another person two talents, and one one talent. The one who had one buried in the, in the sand, but the one who had two worked with those talents and gained more. And then to the person who had five talents, 
Jesus said, take the one who, who had just one and give it to the one who has five. The faithfulness of the person who turned five talents into five more got even more talents. And how did that happen? By favor. He didn't deserve it and he didn't earn that extra. He got that by favor. I'm just here to tell you that when you live your life with faithfulness, favor opens up for you doors and gives you the ability to rise and gives you the ability to overcome the path of kindness. In Ruth chapter two and verse 10, if you want to know a story that just exudes this idea of kindness, creating favor, it's the story of Ruth. And at this, she bowed down with her face to the ground and she exclaimed, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? And Boaz replied, I have been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death uh, of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. What a beautiful expression of kindness that was the motivation behind the favor that Ruth received. If you practice acts of kindness, you will experience incredible favor. You know, last night we had the opportunity to celebrate my son-in-law's 30th birthday. And uh, Fredlin uh, grew up in an orphanage in Haiti that our church through the Caleb Foundation had the privilege of building. And after he uh, graduated from the, uh, the orphanage that he was a part of, when he finished high school, he came here to Austin to get his college edu education. And he graduated with distinction from one of the local colleges here. And then, uh, and then last night we were just celebrating his birthday and he's just a marvelous young man filled with integrity and character. And Laura wanted to celebrate this 30th birthday a little bit extra special. So she took Fredlin's name and, uh, and just kind of did an acrostic with it, with each letter. And then with each letter of his name, she just kind of described some of the attributes and some of the grace that is on Fredlin's life. And, and I'm just watching this, this interchange and Fredlin's on this side of the table and Laura's sitting next to me and she's just sharing it. And Laura's getting a little bit emotional and ch ch choked up while she's talking. And I'm looking across the table and I'm just seeing the deposit of kindness in the heart of another person. And all I could think of is, I was sitting there was this exchange of love, this exchange of favor, this exchange of, of connection as kindness was being expressed. Anytime you express kindness, favor gets activated in the midst of that simple exchange. And then let me close with this last one, the path of significance. And this kind of makes sense, right? When you think about those who had the most favor, like a Mother Teresa, people hated what she believed in. People in secular society, they hated the fact that she loved God and, and she valued life and, uh, and had strong stance on abortion and other things. People in the culture had, had you know, all kinds of issues with her but she had favor wherever she went. She stood in front of presidents and kings and, and, and halls of Congress. She had favor wherever she went because she lived a significant life. Every act of service that you do for someone else activates favor. The other day I was down at the domain and there was a, a lady she was, she was carrying all kinds of packages and I could tell as she was uh, heading towards a, a door that she was going to have trouble with the door. So I just kind of slipped past her and opened up the door for her. She had all these packages and she walked in and to my honest surprise, she turned around and kissed me. Okay. It was Laura. But favor has a way of making things happen doing for you what you never imagined would come back. You extend kindness, you extend service, you live a life of significance and it produces favor. There was a, an elderly lady that was driving to a small town. 
It was cold. It was rainy. And she got a flat tire. So she pulled over to the side of the road. She didn't know what to do. She didn't even know who to call. She felt stranded. And this young man saw the car pulled over to the side and pulled up behind. And when he got out of the car to approach this woman who was in the car, she, he could tell that she was frightened and she was a little bit scared. He, she didn't know who this person was and he was looking a little disheveled. And so he stepped back away from the car to let this woman know that he wasn't meaning any harm. And she rolled down the window and he just said, ma'am, you've got a flat tire. She already knew that, but he said, you got a flat tire and I would be honored to fix it. If you just pop the trunk, I'll get everything uh, ready. And so she did. It was something in the way that he spoke that she trusted him. And sure enough, he fixed the tire, jacked it up the back and put the new tire on and then put everything away and, and told the woman to have a nice day. And she said, can I pay you? And she said, oh no, you don't have to pay me. Just pay it forward to someone else. Well, she drove into the town, which was a few miles up the road and she was hungry and she went to a diner where she was waited upon by a, a pregnant uh, woman who was eight months pregnant. And, you know, she had her meal and she thought about this young man, Brian Anderson. She had asked his name and uh, he thought, well, maybe this is a person I can pay it forward to. And so she only had like a $15 meal, but she put a hundred dollar bill on the plate. And when the waitress took that hundred dollar bill to make change, this elderly woman just slipped out, got in her car and drove away. And this waitress came back to the table, ready to give the change, realizing that the woman was gone. She is now the recipient of $85 in a tip. And when she started to remove the plates from the table underneath the plate, there were four other $100 bills with a note saying a nice young man named Brian Anderson helped fix my tire and told me to pay it for enjoy the day. And this waitress began to cry because Brian Anderson was her husband who had done that act of kindness that activated favor that God in his sovereign ability was able to bring back into her world. And that's a true story because not all of my stories are true. Sometimes I make them up, but this one is true to help you understand that the God that we serve is a God of favor. And there are all kinds of people living in our world that want to express that favor to you. Receive by faith what God has already given and walk on the path that will activate favor in all the rich relationships of your life. Could I hear a good amen? Come on, let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for our time together here today. And Lord, I pray that we would receive by faith the favor and walk in the strength that you provide in the path that generates it in our relationship with others. In Jesus name we pray. And everyone said, amen. amen. Listen, let's all of us stand to our feet. And with nobody leaving early or moving around, let's just take this moment to enjoy the presence of God. Honestly, just raising our hands and surrendering our heart to him. He's gonna fill you with exactly what you need to live this life of favor. Come on, let's rejoice.
His favor real for us in sending His Son. For He so loved the world. He so wanted to express His favor over your life that He sent His only begotten Son to die in our stead, to die for our sins so that we could live, so that we could walk out the favor of God. And maybe you came here today not knowing, not living in the favor of God. Maybe today you came here feeling far away from God, feeling as if you've disappointed God or you came up short of the life that you want to live. I want to tell you that the favor of God has come for you today and you can respond and appropriate, take a hold of, make your own that favor today. So with every head bowed and every eye closed in this auditorium, I want to invite you, if this is your day, if you want to respond to the favor of God and say, Lord, here I am, I am yours. I want to take a hold of your favor, of your love, of the life of Jesus Christ that was given so that I might live. If this is your day to respond to His favor, I want to invite you, whether it's the first time or you're just reiterating, you're coming back to Him today. I want to invite you to just put your hands, both of them high up into the air and just say, Lord, that's me. That's me. I see hands going up all over. Let's all pray out loud and together this morning. Dear God, Thank you for showing your favor in sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. I will live from this day on in your favor and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a great hand this morning. At this time, I want to invite the prayer partners to the front. And if you've responded, I want to ask you to do two things. Number one is, would you text the word forgiven to the number 97000? We've got some great resources we want to get in your hands. We'd love to connect with you in this way. And number two, if you want to come forward, we would love to pray with you today. In fact, if you have anything that you would love prayer for today, we would love the opportunity to stand with you in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. Amen. We, you have also have an opportunity today for the graduates. There's a special reception on your way to the right. There's a special reception there. And there's also an opportunity to take some pictures. I know Pastor Rob and Laura is also going to be there if you want a picture with them to celebrate your graduation. Let me speak this blessing over you before you go. Numbers chapter 6 verse 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Go and walk in the favor of God. Thank you for being here.